out as the Corno Restro. That would be awesome. And then, and only then, do I try the challenge myself. Now, the major scale is the next one. I want to think of that in terms of the chord. If I think about my major scale in terms of the chord, then anything that's in the scale is fair game to play with the chord. All I'm doing is walking down my scale. That's it. C in the bass. I have to take my second finger up to get the B because that's the only solution that makes sense. And I can't hit the D, so I just hit the top three strings. Then I take the finger back down to the, looks like an A minor 7, hit the A, and then I go to the G in my bass. And there's a walk down using the bottom part of the scale. Now, <clears throat> I can do it going up. Here's with a D, here's with an E, an F, G, A. I happen to be using a 3 4 rhythm. I'm going 1, 2, 3, bass, strum, strum. Now, you hear that sound? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's what we spent the majority of our practice time today. I'm, instead of taking like two strings, what I'm doing is taking the, the, the nuts and bolts of the chords themselves that are in the family of the, in the C family. So in C, if I go one, two, three, four, five up in the scale, what I'm doing essentially is outlining the chord itself and finding the, the targets. The lowest note of a C is called C. Of course, that's going to be a target. The highest note, and when I go up five, one, two, three, four, five, on a C chord, it's a G. That's a target. Notice how it fits in the chord. To find the in-between target, really all I'm doing is skipping every other note. So C, I skip the D, and I go to E, and there is my target. So there are the three targets. So what I'm suggesting is that you take, instead of doing two strings at a time, you take whatever number of strings it takes to get to a place five notes higher. Now I'm going to do it the same way. Rest, stroke, up five, all downs. Once I've got that good, I'm going to try down upping it. Down up. Consistent with the alternate picking. And only, I am not interested in speed at all, of course, but as you get better, you will speed that up. Now, this two chord is built on a D minor. To find its five notes, I have to start with the D, not the C. And I walk up five places and I count one, two, three, four, five. That means the lowest note I played and the upper note I played are targets, and they're gonna sound really sharp against that D. Now the middle target is three up, or one, two, three, so that means the F is also a possible target. they sound against the chord. The chord, next chords are three chord. E minor. I'm going to start on an E. I could start on an E. Arnold, I could go down here and do it. Or I could start on this one. All right, pick one or the other for right now. Just kind of get one set this week. So I'm going to do it with rest strokes, nice and sharp. Then I can do it with down ups. Now, once you can do that comfortably, try to find the chord tones, which are our targets. E. I skip over the F and go to G. 
I skip over the A and go to B. So there are my targets. By the way, those targets are all underneath our fingers. If they are, I want you to practice them down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. This motion is just like strumming eighth notes. So this is going to come in mighty handy and just take your time and go slow right now. The next place up from E minor is our F. F feels really good under our fingers. Here's my, here's my rest stroke up five. Count the five. One, two, three, four. And then come right back down. Get it good with the rest stroke. Nice loud sound. Then down up it. If you can if you can match the sound on the rest stroke with the down up, you are rocking it. Now it turns out I skip every note, F. I skip the G, goes to A. I skip the B, I go to C. So it's again right underneath my fingers, the arpeggio. Now the next one is our five chord G. I could start at the bottom and get this one, two, three, four, five, but try it up here this week where it's open, or one, two, three, four, five. You know the notes in the scale. So do that rest stroke, then do it down up and get it nice and accurate. To make my, find my chord tones, my, my targets, it's the bottom one and it's the top one. The in-between one is the open B, right? Because I skip over the A. One, two, three. Oh, there it is. One, three. I skip over the C and there's the D. By the way, that teaches us that's why we can play our G with the double <laughs> like this. Or I could play the G without it, all right? Because the, both of these are targets. Uh, the last one is our A minor. Again, I can play it on the low notes. Or I can play it on the upper notes, which are better for soloing. So A to B, C, D, E. And it's better to think of it as one, two, three, four, five. Just count the fives. After a while, the feeling of going up five is gonna just sound right. Don't forget to down up it and our arpeggio A. I skip over the B, I go to C. Up, and I skip over the D, go to E. Once again, they're right under our hands. So the only one that really wasn't right under our hands was the G and the D minor. Mm -hmm. hmm. All right, that's that was the main thing today. We talked about a little about upper lower neighbors and passing tones. Passing tones and lower neighbors. If I go from the C as the target and I go up one and come right back to the C, that's going to sound really good against somebody playing a C chord. If I go down one place in the scale but come right back to the target, that'll sound good. I could pass from this target up to my next target, the, the third up, and that sounds great. I could circle that target there, go up above it, come right back down. Or I could go below it and come back. Or I could pass up to the, to the one that's five places up, do, re, mi, fa, so. And of course I could surround that as well. We're gonna work a lot with this idea of the five note concept in terms of improvising. I know that that felt a little funny today, but we're gonna do it until it becomes comfortable. So do not worry, it's a whole new idea for you. All right.